So I'm, uh, I've lost my cameraman this week, so we're uh, filming back in the office. I've been out to Flemington and I'm back here now. So uh, before I give this week's uh, track report, I just want to say um, after June 30, if you want to view these videos, you'll need to go to Darren Potter Race Assessments YouTube. And I've also got a website with the same address, so darrenpotterraceassessments.com.au. So before I sort of go into what to expect at Flemington on Saturday, um, just a quick word on you know, some of my recent videos and the Mooney Valley and stuff. Um, when, when I'm walking these tracks and trying to find various lanes or advantages that may or may not exist, they're fairly marginal things. You know, like being in this lane might be worth one to two lengths, or you know, being out there might cost you a length or two or whatever. The, the reality is they won't, in and in and of themselves, decide the race. I mean, the, the other dynamics of the race, the tempo and uh, you know, the form of the horse leading into the role, all those other things, you know, are, are just as important. So it's just part of the mix. And uh, I think that sometimes in the heat of the battle on a race day, some of the, bat the, the debate on social media tends to be a little bit too black and white in my opinion. So, but anyway, I mean, um, you know, the, the, the point of walking the tracks is to try and identify what may or may not be an advantage and then and, and to use that to, um, to our benefit. So uh, this Saturday at Flemington, We've got uh, two races down the straight, um, seven races around the circle, albeit one of them a 2,500 metre race. Now, in the, the longer the race, the less the track pattern will, will play. Uh, you know, it's just not as big a factor. Uh, but it's certainly um, you know, going to be a factor in the three 1,400 metre races and the two 1,600 metre races. So, um, so first of all, I'll just deal with the straight races. Um, the rail moves out a further three metres to the six metre position, so that gets it in the home straight within sort of three and a half horses of where the um, irrigation lanes start, and then that extends out about six or seven lanes. So as we saw at the, the, the most recent Flemington meeting, that horses in, that, in that, those irrigation lanes dominated the straight races, and I expect that'll be the best ground again. Although, I will say, that the outside four metres of this track, which is the other part of the track affected by the um, irrigation equipment, albeit not as heavy equipment, but still affected, has had no horses on it and it's quite firm out there. So I think um, horses drawn wide would be well served to stay hard against the outside rail. Um, so for instance, where Invincible Al come last um, meeting to win, was right on the edge of that. Like if he had gone a little bit wider, I think he would have won by a little bit further. But um, so you sort of need to be, you know, on, on the outside four metres of the track to get that, that advantage of that particularly uh, that firm patch that's affected by the uh, irrigation equipment. Um, so then uh, we go to the, the the races around the circle. So remembering that, as I discussed in the last Flemington video, that the, the Turn start the, the turn out of the back straight starts at about the 1400 meter mark, so it's you know it's almost um, covering the, on that big sweeping turn for almost a thousand meters around to the home turn <clears throat> until they straighten up. Um, you don't have to get all that like once you're more than three horses away from the rail on that turning part of the track, you're into that that irrigation part of the track, which is. Um, just that little bit firmer and again I just want to point out that when I'm talking about minor advantages here you know like I think being on that lane will be an advantage of one to two lengths over being hard on the fence it's not doesn't mean you won't be able to win on the fence just a minor advantage to be at that little bit wider so uh, in, in those lanes so I think what will happen as the day progresses is the jockeys will jerry to it and they'll start to ride a little bit further off the rail but I think no matter what they do the advantage will sit with the horses that are drawn wide, that are well ridden. So you're looking, I think, a, a particular thing to look for on Saturday in those six circle races are wide draws and clever jockeys that understand how to, to take advantage of these type of situations. So um, I think that the, the, the wind at two meetings ago was a real problem at Flemington, but um, the, the Bureau has just changed the forecast for this Saturday. So the, the wind on the day is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And initially they'd forecast a northwesterly, which would have been a minor issue for on-pace runners um, up to 25 kilometres, which is sort of just getting to that borderline where it starts to have an impact. And they've now turned it around to a southwesterly wind and 
you know, it's becoming quite light, so it could be no no factor at all by the sounds of it. I, I'm thinking there were, there was also some showers and uh, you know, five mils of rain was forecast for Saturday, and now that appears unlikely. So uh, the track is a good track. This is a the track's in tremendous order for this time of year. The horses will love it. They'll come out of the barriers and they'll want to run, and they'll run reasonably good times there on on Saturday. Um, so, you know, we're going to have some nice, solid racing with, you know, the horses will naturally run at reasonable tempos and I think, particularly in those um, circle races, that you, I'm going to be favouring horses in the outside half of the draw ridden by those right jockeys. So, um, I think the advantage is probably going to depend you know the tempo of the race will be a, will definitely be a factor um, the first place I'll be looking is those up and off positions so you know sitting within two lengths of the lead but off the rail and then you know back to the horses no, three wide with cover I think will be a great position on, on Saturday and you know if there's enough pressure in the races you'll be able to peel out even wider than that and come from the back so uh, it'll be really interesting racing I think um, it, it'll be a good punters day if you um, you know can cover enough enough bases. So, anyway, with all that said, let's uh, I'll just, maybe if I just preview a couple of races that will um, you know give you some idea of how I'm thinking going in the meeting. And so, they, one of the things I'll be looking for is, are horses that are presenting off um, the, the Flemington meeting a couple of weeks ago that are moving from an inside draw on that track two weeks ago to an outside draw on Saturday. I think any, horses in that category. There's a few of them. Um, will run better. They'll, they'll have an advantage that they didn't have at that most recent meeting. So maybe let's have, just have a look at uh, race five and then I'll also have a look at race nine. So race five is the staying race over the 2,520 metres. Um, so from a speed point of view, Muja Dale's drawn out wide. He'll come across and probably take up the front. But you've also got horses like Cougar Express and um, Mega Blast. Hursley, Trifor, not, not far away. So I think we'll, we'll end up with a pretty solid tempo in this race. One of the reasons I just wanted to talk about this race because it's a, it's a race that um, we've talked about on some of the shows with Ralphie recently because we've got a lot of the horses that come out of that really interesting race at um, at Casterton that have subsequently won. So Shakopee, Cougar Express, he didn't win, but he ran an enormous race at Mooney Valley and Falago. Um, so here they are at their, their subsequent run. So it'll be interesting to see how that transpires and um, the other main player in the race is Mega Blast who like to be honest I was quite hard on him last week when I assessed him I was assuming he was a, um, a horse that's looking for rain affected ground and um, he ran particularly well on a nice firm track there at Mooney Valley last week and he he backs up this week so um, he's a player in the race for sure and I you know that it's a wide open race. I've sort of be, be, it's a race I probably won't be betting in, and if I do, it'll be very small. Um, and Falago's got to be a great chance again off his good win here two weeks ago, where he ran down Gothland. I think Shakopee's you know just hit his straps in Australia, and that was a really good win at Sandown, and I think he'll run a, a really competitive race again. Uh, Cougar Express will be thereabouts. So I think he's probably a good a big price in the early market. And a bullish stock's sort of hard to knock. He's a, um, he's, a, he's a horse I always have trouble catching, but he's there to run a, a nice race again. So, um, Hursley, most of Hursley's best form is at 2,000 metres. He's sort of just been racing a little bit dour this prep, so I suppose you could make a case for him. You could also make a case for Charlevoix in this race. So, you know, wide open race, probably one I'm going to steer clear of, to be honest. And... Um, but it'll be a race that I'll be really interested in watching, even if I don't have a bet in the race. And then uh, let's go over to race nine, because it's uh, got a factor that I was um, referring to. Okay, so... Um, to, the, the interesting factor here is we've got two horses presenting off... The meeting here two weeks ago um, they ran in, both ran in 1400 meter races and this is a 1600 meter race and um, one being Samovaro 
and the other one being Urban Ruler. And those two 1400 meter races uh, two weeks ago, they were running very similar time and very similar sectionals. So on face value, there's the, 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 the race that they present off, there's not a lot of difference between them. Yet the market has assessed um, Samovare in the early betting, like around the uh, five to two mark and Urban Ruler as much as 10 to one. The other main player in the early market is uh, Widgie Turf, who uh, finally sort of straightened himself out last start at um, at Sandown, and uh, he could be he could be right to go on with it now that he's uh, he's got that performance under his belt, where he's able to take up a reasonable position in a race and then use his strength to um, to win a Saturday race. So, despite the big field here, it's a f there's no designated leader, and it's a really it's only the field size that's going to create any tempo here. So because it's race nine, how the track's playing on the day will um, be a big factor in how this race is run and what positions I'll be looking to take up. So Damien Oliver on some of RA from gate five will push forward, but whether Ollie takes a sit or wants to hold the front will just, re I think, really depend on how things are, are playing on the day and what a shock's a middle draw. He's uh, won two races recently at Ballarat, racing on pace. So I assume, you know, and he struggled in town taking a sit. So they might be keen to, to, to go forward. Um, if Simply Invincible gets a run, it's an emergency at the moment. If it, it was to gain a run, it would be an on pace factor. And Urban Rule has got that nice wide draw there. So um, Tommy Sadler will have a lot of options on that horse. So really interesting how the, how this race. Um, plays out and uh, what's happened in the earlier races on the day will have a huge factor in this race. Now when I was talking before about uh, horses switching from inside draws at the most recent meeting at Flemington to an outside draw, uh, Urban Rilla fits that category. He, Tommy Sadler rode this horse beautifully from gate one to, to, to win here at the most recent meeting when that was a disadvantaged position to be in and that's what I'm talking about. That, that The tempo of that race ended up being quite soft Tommy Sadler rode the horse really well, and even though it wasn't able to get out to those better lanes and other horses in the race were able to get to them where they were advantaged, now Urban Rule still put a hole in them because he had a, a form advantage, he was well ridden, and he overcome the, the disadvantage he had, which was that inside gate. So, you, you know, you can, you can overplay these things too much. So if a horse has got a significant form advantage, you know, all, all the biases in the world might not be enough to, to surmount the advantage that horse had. So, in this case, Urban Rilla moves from that what was a problematic inside draw to a lovely wide draw on this day. I think he'll, Tommy said, will have no trouble just, he should, he should just aim to be in the three wide, three wide lane, you know, either a length or two off the leaders outside them or with cover or whatever he wants, you know, any of those and just pull out five and six wide in the home straight and I think he'll, um, he'll be in the finish. Like his performance here at the most recent meeting was outstanding and he, he, he moves to a, a more advantageous situation. So I'm, I'm very surprised he's uh, $10, but you know, I'm, I've, I've spoke to a, a few other ratings guys today and they've sort of got him marked longer. So um, maybe I'm just viewing the race differently to what some of the other ratings guys are gonna have it. And um, perhaps he might even be better odds than that on Saturday, but I'll certainly be backing Urban Ruler. Um, Sam Avar's an interesting run. Like she's certainly got more fitness improvement than Urban Ruler probably has. Um, you know, she was off a break there last start. She had to chase a really fit, informed mare in Padrina. She did a pretty good job. She had an inside draw there, but she stays in an inside draw here, and she'll need a clever ride from Damien Oliver. You know, so yes, she's a really good chance in the race, but um, you know, she's she's a marginal price for me at the moment. Uh, Widgie Turf, as I said, like he, he he really did put it together last start, and I think. You know, he's a talented enough horse that I'd certainly want him on, on my side in this race. I think those three are, you know, clearly got an advantage over the rest of this field. And uh, they're the only three horses I'm really interested in backing. The only other runner I'd consider at big odds would be simply invincible if it was to get a run. But, um, yeah, it, it, you know, once we get past those three runners, there's a little bit of a gap back to the rest, but it's a really dense group. So, you know, is it possible that one of them will improve enough to... To beat those three, yep, of course it is. It always is. But um, on balance, I think the probability be well and truly on our side if we're able to back Urban Ruler 
Reggie Turf and Samavare at the right time in the market. And I, 